a little Putin and Goldie are going to be up here hanging out while I'm doing the experiment, right? You're up there on the shelf. We're going to be showing a magnetic stirrer, right? Right, guy? What do you think about that, man? You're the engineer, aren't you? Cat engineers are a lot smarter than people engineers. I guarantee you that. Right, Putin? Yeah. Meow, meow. Okay, this is one of the things I need for colloidal silver. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a video on colloidal silver today, but you do need this, really, if you're going to make the really good stuff, because you want to keep it stirred for days, you know, instead of going there and stirring it every hour. This is a magnetic stirrer. Uh, I think I paid 52 bucks on it on Amazon, and uh, I said, whoa, that's a good deal. And it's got this thing. I think this is how this works. It holds the, it's like rubber here, and you can adjust it up and down, left and right. Holds your glass in place. But you know what's cool about this thing? This is one of those Wally World. It's stainless steel sleeve. And the bottom is glass. So it's not affecting anything. And stainless steel isn't that magnetic anyway. Um, but the bottom is glass, which is cool. So this covers up the light from coming inside. Yet I can still see what's going on. And just turn that to the face of the wall when you're making the... Uh, after you make the colloidal silver and you got this lid on it that's like that so that that is makes it all you know impermeable to light and it's glass and it's strong you know it's still so here you turn this on and watch it goes boop see that what it's got inside there it's a little uh, oblong teflon coated thing that's the magnet picks up on this plate and nothing touches anything it's Teflon coated Teflon is actually a, uh, a, a material that's inert to any type of chemicals up to about 500 degrees and it's got a speed adjustment so you can go like this see see that swirl I was gonna make one of these but then I saw that little thing that you put in there that's like eight ten bucks or something or eight bucks or something plus shipping and uh, by the time I made it, it would have been almost as much as what I paid for this. <laughs> I was like, so I should buy it, you know? I was almost going to make one because I, um, I have a, what do you call it, the large project boxes. I have uh, switches. I also have some brand new computer fans out there that, you, that have a magnet on the back by default, you know? So I probably like, when I make the colloidal silver, I'll probably just put it on. You know, I could really turn it up and do that. It, it's good. Its capability is up to a liter. Um, but I wouldn't need to spin it that fast. Put it on low speed. Save the motor. Something like that. See? That's enough. That's enough. So when I'm making a colloidal silver, this is what's going to be used. Magnetic stirrer. Um... And actually, even if I'm making it the crappy way, even if I'm not using Spooky 2 or nothing, say I'm using like, uh, you know, the Bob Beck Zapper Colloidal Silver Maker, which actually that thing is nothing but some batteries hooked together with an LED light, something special. Um, if I'm making it the cheap way, hey, keeping it stirred, man, that's the way you want to do it. And, um, you know, it's cool. I'll shut this off a second. First, speed it up, turn it down, and uh, take this off here a second. See this? I don't know where you get these, if you can get these anymore, but this thing fits in here almost perfect. Like it's, like this lip here, you know, this lip here, it's, um, this thing almost fits in here perfect. So, like, I don't even think you need to have this on here. I mean, that's how good it is. That's how good it fits. You know, it's not going to go anywhere. And, of course, um, if I have this thing here. <laughs> Since this is stainless steel, I have to make sure this goes in the middle. And once it starts, it's fine. Okay. I, I, I don't think this would even slip off. I don't even need this on top of here. But, you know, it doesn't affect... Um, stainless steel has some magnetism in it, and I was wondering if this would work. But since it has a glass bottom, it's, it's pretty damn good. And even at low speed, see the swirl? So that's the thing you need for making colloidal silver, and I guess as an added precaution, I would, I would put um, the lid on here like loose or something, and put the top on like that, and and I, I guess you can even use this to steady the, uh, the the silver rod, one of the silver rods. You can have like you know they're supposed to be so far apart. 
you could have um, you can hold this down put a silver rod through here and have one over here and one of them will be held in place so it doesn't go anywhere that's pretty good man I'm pretty happy with this beel so getting a little more scientific here yeah I got a few uh, electronic gizmos I got the uh, what the hell you got my Hitachi uh, uh, analog uh, uh, what the hell you call that damn thing again <laughs> I forgot and also the uh, also, oscilloscope. I got the oscilloscope, and I also have the um, uh, Leader LDC822 frequency counter, and uh, you know a little bullshit like cheap multimeters and stuff. But anyway, um, you know, get a little more scientific here. Um, I also got my solder gun, a couple of those. So, um, and a bunch of little electronic parts. So, you know, we might get a little more electronic on this channel too, because. Uh, but even if you're making the cheap stuff, I, I would recommend getting this. Even if you're not using Spooky Two, I would recommend getting this for making a cloud of silver, because, or nano, whatever you want to call it. I know they call it cloud of silver, ionic silver, nano silver. Uh, and actually, anytime you make this stuff, there's always a little bit of each in it, you know. But when we're going to be making this with Spooky Two, we're going to be making um, what is on par with the best commercial grade, and uh, this really is a requirement for it sorry it does but you know say you don't get spooky too and you don't even buy the spooky too and you just want to make it some other way having a stirrer for the uh, colloidal silver I think is very important um, you'll get more evenness and since the water is turning all the time it's not like having one section is getting all built up with a lot of silver and another part is not having that much it's making it more consistent throughout so um, that's all it is just a switch on off switch speed control and uh, it comes with an extra fuse, which I taped to the side here in case it blow the fuse. I got an extra fuse. Um, but well worth it. I mean, it's uh, probably about a... Sh I mean, I don't know. I guess if you was going to make one of these, unless you had the spare parts, um, it still take you a couple hours or more to make it. You're probably better off buying it, and then you got something that works like properly. And um, if it ever breaks, I'll... Uh, take it apart and fix it you know that's the thing but it's got a nice metal case on it adjustable speed control and I guess I could have made one because I have the on off switch I have the ohm meters I have the big project box I have brand new uh, freaking case fans for the freaking computers um, which have a magnet in the back and the only thing I would have had to buy was that but it's here by the time I'll do all that shit I'll be could have just had this and that would be done with it so anyway We'll be making some silver hat pretty soon, um, but don't expect an update right away. Probably take a few days. I'm gonna probably start doing this um, today because it's gonna take a couple days to make this stuff, and we'll be starting out with distilled water, not uh, tap water like I'm demonstrating in here. Be using distilled water.